are recording, and we will be going live in five, four, three, two, one. We're live. Good morning, Owasso. This is the Twins with Owasso Live, and this is the Morning Loop. It is currently 8.02. We're in a little bit late this morning. There's a com Our computer is telling us that we need to run updates, so it's running slower than we would want it to. So sorry about being just a little behind the ball, but... We're here. So, uh, with that being said, it is currently 82 or excuse me, yeah, 82 degrees outside. Uh, we have a slight chance of rain over the next uh, couple hours here. There is lightning back behind the Y, so uh, there's a chance, but like I said, it's a low chance still. So, maybe have a hat or an umbrella prepared in case, because it's going to be hot still today. So, don't expect it to be a chilly rain. It's going to be hot and muggy out today. So, have an umbrella, wear a hat, or some type of hooded jacket light jacket i suppose with that being said traffic conditions are pretty slow actually right now there's some type of uh i don't know if somebody's having car trouble or if the police are actually trying to arrest somebody they have two officers dispatched right out there in the local pd and uh, county mountie or highway patrol yeah so they are i don't know if they're helping this person with car trouble or if there's actually a uh, some type of pseudo arrest thing going on right now but uh just be advised 169 is actually going slow and steady because the uh because of the officers over there, you know, so everybody's got a got a gawk, you know, they're driving by going, well, what's going on over there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so uh, be prepared. The traffic wouldn't be bad if it wasn't for that, but well, also, uh, that's what's going on. School is officially back in today. Yeah, I, I saw the saw kids, yes, yeah, standing outside the apartments as we were driving to work. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, school's officially back in, so it's, I guess, today is maybe the first day of school, because I didn't see them yesterday waiting yeah, outside. They were not, so today's the day. So, yeah, I guess it's, what is it? Thursday. So, okay. So I guess, yeah, that makes sense. Today would be the days everybody's getting their syllabuses and getting their list of school supplies and whatnot. So I guess this weekend, the uh, office de supply depot, well, you know, honestly, the kids have tablets and stuff now, don't they? So they do. a lot of the they might not have as many requirements for items that you actually need to get for school. So that's the digital age does make things easier that way, but then again, you know, it's like our tax dollars are going to pay for these iPads the kids take home. <laughs> if there's anything I've learned from school, it seems to be like army schoolhouses. You still need to bring pencils, pens, protractor. Yeah. <laughs> Go through all the list of crap that you really don't probably need like 90% of the time, but they're going to make you bring it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's for sure. That entire pack list that we took to phase three was just, I don't think we even touched half of it. But yeah, definitely always bring a spare pair of boots, though. Holy cow, yeah. you learned that. Yes, they survive. They survive me the most of the time the, for the last three days. That's all I need. I just just last out three days, little boots. You can do it. Absolutely. So, with that being said, uh, we'll just kind of go. No real changes to the Owasso events calendar, other than like I said, us figuring out school started up today. So, with that being said, we're gonna go right into, I guess, our primary subject, which is gonna be Kamala Harris, first woman president by death. And like I said, that's not us saying that like she's going to have something happen to him. We think Joe Biden, we hadn't heard anything from Joe for a long time, so there's a lot of predictions being had in like the betting market. This isn't crazy just how, but this, that's how you know society's like totally degenerate. You know, it's like when there's betting on absolutely everything. So the betting markets are kind of predicting that Joe is not going to survive and Kamala will be elected, not elected, but appointed 47th president. Because Joe's gonna have has been experiencing some health troubles lately. Like I said, we know his decline has been quick in the last year. So, when if you know anything about old folks, like it, it, it's quick and sudden whenever people take their turn, quick and sudden, like it's just like a straight downhill. And it's because you know, for our grandpa, is because he had can he was fighting cancer. But you know, you wouldn't have known he had cancer right up there until the very end. Because he was outside mowing the lawn, trimming trees, like as like an eighty-seven-year-old man, and you know the doctors were like, he wasn't doing that, and like no, he was. He was literally using a chainsaw the other day, and like they go, the doctors like that's not possible. And it's like, yeah. well, it is. Yeah, the assumption of doctors being like, oh, this old man must be retired and just sitting in a rocking chair on the front porch. Yeah, that's, don't get me that's wrong, not how it works. He did do that, family. but it was after working all morning and then he'd be napping by three in the afternoon. But like, I mean, he this still guy still put work in, but that's what's happened to Joe. It's just like his decline is coming very fast. So that's what we think is going to happen. And in fact, we're not even the predictors of this. You know who predicted this? 
Gerald Ford predicted this in 1989. In fact, you got that, pull up that video real quick. We'll actually show you President Ford. I mean, he, he was former President Ford at this point, but uh, he predicted this. So uh, I sent, it should be the last video I sent you in our uh, Owasso Live uh, chat. So if you uh, scroll down. No, not that one yet. Yeah, sorry. This one. Got sorry, it. I forgot. Got I sent you the it. Constantine one. But yeah, check out this incredible, um, basically, uh, Ford predicting this. I mean, it's it's uh, it's profound. How like what what could be the, one of the most accurate predictions ever put or ever recorded. So uh, whenever you're ready, Chad, just yeah, uh, one second. I've gotta you got to transition to it. Yeah, yeah I got to fix a couple of things. Awesome. But yeah, check out this video of Gerald Ford, former President Gerald Ford, predicting the future. Mr. Ford, what advice would you give a young lady wanting to become President of the United States? Well, I hope we do have a young lady at some point become President of the United States. I can tell you how I think it will happen, because it won't happen in the uh, normal course of events, w either the Republican or Democrat political party will nominate a man for president and a woman for vice president. And the woman and man will win. So you'll end up with a, a president, a male, and a vice president, a female. And in that term of office of the president, the president will die, and the woman will become president under the law or constitution. And once that barrier is broken, from then on, men better be careful, because they'll have a hard, hard time ever even getting a nomination in the future. But that's the way it's going to happen, and I uh, think it'll probably come sometime in the next uh, Four or eight years. Oh wow, he was wrong about that. Yeah, he was definitely but, wrong. But that is about the time they started putting females on the the ticket. Like Hillary Clinton was making her bids for it. So, uh, but yeah, w amazing. I c I couldn't put that any better. I mean, Gerald Ford, what a what a guy. I mean, that's a that's a very accurate prediction. He was wrong about the timeline, but most people are when it comes to timelines. Like it either happens way quicker or considerably later. But that that's amazing. So. That's what the betting prediction markets are out there predicting, that Kamala will actually be 47th president, and then Trump's going to have to change all of his merch to say 48. So, there you go. But yeah, it, it, it will be, uh, that's interesting though, the fact that, you know, Gerald Ford was able to predict something like that. It's pretty, uh, pretty wild. So... I don't know how else we can say that any better. I mean, that's that's yeah. about all I can say well, about that particular subject. The only thing I can say is like Ted Cruz has made a statement saying that that he thinks that Kamala is going to be the forty seventh forty seventh because he thinks Joe Biden's in serious health decline right now. Like there was a apparently there was a fire truck and ambulance called to the White House not to like only just yesterday. Apparently this happened yesterday, but we don't know what it was for. It yeah, could have been so, for anything. Yeah, that and that's 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 my thing too. It's like. The White House has to have hands down the best medical staff available, like just live as like people who pseudo live in the White House. They can't not like. Why would you call like the fire department had to be called because of some type of you know it, they would have called that for like a security guard or a gate guard, somebody on the outside, you know, working the perimeter, not somebody who's as important as like hey. You know, two doors down from the president's room is actually the medical office. You know, that's what I... Th mm -hmm. It has to be like that. You know, they, they cannot be like... The, the president is not like the rest of us. It's like, oh, call the ambulance, call 911. It's like, no, we're in the White House. We already have our... We have staff on, on standby for this. Yeah. So I, I think that's a silly... You know, like that that whole ambulance oh, yeah. thing is... So, but So either way, we'll push on from this because it's all speculative. It's all gambling markets now. It's just... It's dumb. But, you know, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. Gambling markets are one of the truest ways to find the truth because, you know, when when money's actually on the line, people do not lie when money's on the line. It's not like Fallout where it's like, oh, we'll we'll risk killing millions to 
for control instead of making more money. It's like that's silly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's uh what's next on the agenda, my friend? Well, uh, I can pull up the soldier thing, the soldier thing we we're talking about. The, oh yeah, the Taliban parading around with our stuff, and then Kamala saying, "I'm ready to take over," even though she was in the situation room when they did the withdrawal from. Go ahead, pick pick one of those. Okay. I'm, I'm totally happy with any of them. All right, well, we'll go with that because we were just talking about this yesterday. So let me pull this over, and we will get these videos pulled up. There we go. Uh, ungroup. Let me switch back over to the little screen here. There we go, and we're ready to show. You good? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. That he wants you to be the last person in yeah. the room, particularly for big decisions, just as he was for President yeah. Obama. He just made a really big decision. Afghanistan. Yes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. And you feel comfortable? I do. Because it's just, yeah. it's just Arabic. Yeah, I said, yeah, it's uh, they're parading around all the military equipment that we left behind in uh, Afghanistan. All of our LMTVs, trucks. I don't think that I don't recognize those helicopters. I'm almost 100 percent positive those are not our helicopters. So. And if they are, we source them from somebody else because those look like Russian helicopters. Yes, but they have over seven billion dollars worth of equipment, and they're the apparently, according to what we saw yesterday, you know, on that CIA analyst saying, "Oh, they're like the biggest sellers of American arms now." Yeah, and and, and again, that's nothing new, but that level of equipment being left is unheard of. Usually it's just a stacks of weapons that, you know, nobody wanted to pick back up or take home because, the you know, we had our support staff there and it was like, how am I supposed to bring all this crap home? So this is what, you know, like movies like Lord of War are about with Nick Cage. You know, it's like that you, you leave these arsenals there, you know, like militaries dissolve overnight and it's like somebody comes in and just takes it and sells it all in the black market. That's what's happening. They, now, the, now the Taliban are either using it or they're selling it to fund terrorism all around the world. And like I said, horrible, horrible strategy. I mean, you saw Kamala. I was the last person in the room. We made this decision together. It's like, bad idea. And now the Taliban get to have billions of dollars to either fundraise for terrorism or they have our equipment to actually specifically use for terrorism. So, but again, you know, like those trucks were probably all pretty dilapidated and used pretty hard. So they'll be used. It's, it's the same problems that we have here in the U.S. military. It's like keeping our trucks and all our vehicles functioning is actually a lot of hard work. Yeah. But like I said, if you can get it to work, they are effective tools of war. Mm -hmm. Sad, sad state of affairs. But I mean, yeah, horrible decision to leave all that stuff there. All right. So we'll move on to the next little subject next, matter. Next one I have here is uh, of happy this video warriors? you sent me is the happy warrior video that every single news media is using referring to uh, M, -walls. M walls. Okay. So you all remember. In fact, if you can, while I'm talking about this, try to pull up a uh, the video is of a it's not your job to interpret the news. It's our job. You oh, know, like yeah. the. So if you guys remember. Back in the day, there was the, – the, the media universally got together to talk about COVID misinformation, and then people like, you know, side by side put that video together where they had every single news outlet, it, whether it be huge ones like CNN and Fox to local news stations, local Fox affiliates and local NBC and ABC affiliate news stations saying – it's not your job. It's our job to interpret the news for you. It's like, and it's all them saying the exact same thing over and over again. That's what this next video with Tim Walls is. You know, it's like they're, uh, that's, it, it's them all parroting the, a lot like Donald Trump's, like everyone's saying, oh, Donald Trump's slurring his words. Donald Trump's slurring his words. It, all the media outlets are using the exact, they're, they're, it's like AI. I'm sure all the news journalists agree, but like I said, they're just having AI generate the same catch lines for all of their stories and just putting it all out instead of people having independent thought or independent uh, critiques about what is being said or what they think him slurring his words were. It's just uniformly they're saying the exact same thing, exact same story being put out through every single news outlet. So it's it's very scary that they all jump on board and do this. You know, it's like 
it's obviously manipulation. It's obviously coordinated. So go ahead and play so which this. Which one do you want me to do? The go ahead and do this one first, and we okay. can go, go show this. So show the Tim one, Walls one first. Okay, here we go. What it looks like to be a propaganda sheep. Walls is a kind of happy warrior. Happy warriors. Happy warriors. He was certainly the happy warrior last night and, and seemed to be the happy warrior last night. A happy warrior. Folksy backstory. Are going to be very happy warriors. There is a new happy warrior. Following the kind of happy warrior mold. Happy warrior. Happy warrior mentality. Wicked sense of humor. Look how happy the pig looks. And this is what it looks like to be there a you propaganda go. So that, that woman's right. That's what propaganda looks like. In fact, why, before we play the, the COVID one where the, the COVID response from all the news outlets, why don't you play the, uh, the Generation Kill video for oh, me yeah. real quick. Yeah, happy soldiers. A happy soldier. Yeah. That's, that's not- happy warriors. We're all happy warriors, okay? Like, let me tell you this. Generation Kill is going to put... So watch this, this clip from Generation Kill we're about to pull them back. The Army and the, and the Marine Corps... This is specifically the Marines in Generation Kill, but... They don't want happy warriors, okay? And they uh, this scene in Generation Kill will explain why. All right, transition. Why do you need me to get you all this stuff? In the infinite wisdom of whoever runs the military post exchange stores, they won't sell this stuff in quantity to actual military personnel or civilians like yourself. Sky's the limit. And why is that? To keep us angry. If Marines could get what they need when they needed it, we would be happy, and we wouldn't be ready to kill people all the time. See, the Marine Corps is like America's little pit bull. They beat us, treat us, and once in a while they let us out to attack somebody. What's the big deal with the batteries? Uh, that's it. That's it on that. But that is that does sum up the military. And if you haven't seen Generation Kill, it is not for kids. Like it is an adult, you know show but i highly recommend watching generation kill it does bring you into the understanding of like what goes on in a soldier's or in this case a marine's head while they're in combat and in these environments yes and, and i've talked to a lot of people who are involved in the invasion of iraq and afghanistan they go yeah that's basically exactly what it looked like watching generation kill so if you want to get an, a pseudo accurate perspective of what that war looked like and how it was conducted that generation kills a really good example of that so uh with that being said let's pull up the propaganda video hi i'm fox san antonio's jessica headley and i'm ryan wolf our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our treasure valley communities the el paso las cruces communities eastern iowa communities mid-michigan communities we are extremely proud of the quality balanced journalism that cbs4 news produces but we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible one sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these publish same stories without checking facts first. first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Go ahead and pause it. Like uh, that, that, that whole pick collage thing. That's that's what I wanted. That right there. That is what propaganda looks like. That is how you are manipulated from corporate masterminds who are pulling the strings way above. They sent that script out to all these news stations and said, "You will read this." And then, of course, you know now we have the the YouTube age. We're in the the internet era. Somebody could clip all that together and be like, yeah, and this is what propaganda looks like. So I love that. I love that. If you, if you are a average news and mainstream media consumer, you are sheep. And you are following that right there. I said you got to find independent sources that you trust so you can follow and hopefully not be led astray by uh, mainstream corruption. Because like I said... Honesty and integrity is not the way anymore. It is securing their paycheck. It's like, do you want to work here? Do you want to read the news here? Yeah, well, I'm, I don't know what else I would do. It's like, well, if you want to feed your family, you're going to say this. So, yeah. Anywho.
we'll uh, push on to our next subject because that uh, I think what we just showed just speaks for itself. All right. Well, the next couple of subjects is the that food pyramid thing that you sent me, uh, and the immigration thing, and then this Constantine Kissin debate with a pro Palestinian person. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just pick one of them, and we'll hopefully we'll have enough time to right. complete well, this. Let's uh, stick with uh, this one because immigration is a little bit more important than I think the food count. Yeah. And this is Lauren Chen. Love Lauren Chen, and the and she's on the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, who is uh, Sargon of Akkad or uh, Carl Benjamin from the UK. Fantastic. I've been following him for years, so he's somebody that I trust, and I trust his uh, news program, The Lotus Eaters. So check it out. We'll see what they got to go. We'll see what they got to say. Uniquely, I've got to say, a European problem. You don't see countries like Japan, like China, like South Korea asking, well, are we treating the foreigners good enough? Like, do we need to do more for them? Absolutely not. And there's that. I've, I've been loving it because Japan, unfortunately, population collapse. They are starting to import people. Uh, the government is very much against the wishes of the people. There are now these viral videos of uh, officials at airports literally just sending them right back, like right back, turn around. Absolutely not. Sometimes these migrants are crying, but it's like it, you could do oh, that. I've seen a few you of could those. just do that. Very it's pathetic. possible. We act like, oh, no, we could never. We could actually quite easily do it. It's always we just don't have the will to do it. Well, the Japanese don't seem to be as uh, sus susceptible to uh, Look at picture of brown crying man. Throw away your civilization. Therefore, no laws or borders. Brown mm. person cried. Yeah, exactly. Uh, some, for, for some reason, our elite class are very, very sympathetic to that cause. This is a uniquely... Yeah, so that, that's what's amazing. Is This is how you know that our society, we are too feminized in our society and we are too... There's too many women calling shots. And I'm not saying that women are a bad thing. I'm not criticizing women as a whole. But what I'm saying is... This whole ideology of if somebody starts crying, well, we can't wait. Well, we obviously have to do whatever they want now. I mean, it, it, it's it's human nature. It's even even guys. Like, I mean, when women cry, guys, we do not know how to deal with it. It is a, you know, unless you're just one of those alpha giga chads like Chad over here, <laughs> you, you, a woman could cry. You just look at him. You're like, those are fake tears, and I don't care. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you, you have to know. But I mean, like, it's hard to know. And like I said, a lot of people can work themselves up emotionally and actually that's, cry. That's how you know that the sexes truly are different, or the genders, whatever you want to use. But yeah, little boys don't cry. Like that's a, there's a reason why we we aren't why guys don't deal with crying people well because we're like if we see a guy that's crying, You're like, we, we do go. It's, the, it's a cringe moment. You where you go unless <laughs> it's somebody you know or care about, and you know that they're dealing like either they're in pain or they just lost their wife or kid or a close family member. Like it, but if you just see a dude crying, you're like, oh come on, cowboy up, man. So there are times when it's okay to cry, but like I said, it, it mo for the most part, like we we cringe or we we are disgusted by that what we see. So. You know, but and, our culture is completely, in, the whole point of this is our culture is crippled whenever we see tears. Like, literally, AOC, all these people, like, they go to the board, like, oh, these people are being separated. Uh -huh, I'm crying. It's like, it doesn't matter. We need to control who comes into our country. Yeah. But that just gets back to what we were talking about. Is like, But that's like women's default. Yeah. That's women's default. Protect. And, yeah, mm -hmm. you see tears, must protect, must protect. Mm -hmm. And with guys, it's like, no, it could be fake. It could be lying. So again, our, our society is very feminized right now, and, and women kind of dominate the political landscape because, again, a grown man crying and being deported should not bother anyone. Nope. But people go, that's so cruel, that's so evil. No, it's not. Him breaking the law to get here is what's wrong and evil. Mm -hmm. True. But next, so you want to do uh, the Constantine Kissin debate or the food pyramid scam? Might hold off on the food pyramid and talk about it tomorrow if, after we do the review, so okay. uh, if we have time. So we'll go ahead and do this Constantine Kissin one and be like, this is how you know that, that you know people on the left, or specifically people who support Palestine, are uh, they're just bad faith actors, and they don't have any integrity, and they don't really care about the truth. Because I mean, just watch this. This when I when I saw this, I, I mean, my jaw hit the floor. So uh, go ahead and play this whenever you're ready. You got it. How many people do you think were raped on October seventh? Approximately zero. A lot of the dead civilians were Pause it. dead because they were targeted by the Israelis. Approximately zero. That I mean, this is somebody that you know he thought he could bring on and debate and have like a good faith conversation with. He's like approximately zero people were okay. women were yeah. essayed on that day. Yeah. Like, are just, you kidding? Yeah, just for the record though, like 
he invited Constantine on his show. Oh, I see. So, so this is the opposite, like I said. But he, no reason he did that is because he had Constantine had brought this guy on his show before, but they did not talk about this particular issue. Yeah. But now this guy shows his true colors to Constantine Kissin when it comes to the Israel Palestine conflict. Yeah, um, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. How could you believe that? I mean, that's what happens in war. I mean, like you can go track every war throughout history, like. Everyone's like, oh, they were gentlemanly battles. Like, yeah. no, I mean, which I the, the whole purpose yeah. of war is like you rape and pillage the, the country that you, you're you attacking. Yeah. Well, it's even like I don't even like to talk about it because, you know, you don't like to because, you know, it's it's a very glorified war. But World War Two, apparently Americans did the had there were issues of Americans doing this in like France and stuff as we were going through. But yeah. You have to, have to remember is like not all the French were on our side. Yeah. In World War Two, there were the Vichy French who were like the fascist French that were like, yeah, we like uh, we like the Nazi. The yeah. <laughs> we like the well, and, and, and that's the thing. It's, it's happened all throughout history, even the most civilized of wars, like, you know, like the Revolutionary War, even the Civil War. Like, I mean, those we had a better moral foundation back then because religion was a bigger part of our culture back then. But now, I mean, if it wasn't for the, the strict court of military justice, this stuff would happen a whole lot more. So go ahead and we'll finish this out and then we'll wrap up. But yeah, go ahead. Really? Army, why don't you actually ask me my opinions about things instead of putting words in my mouth or arguing with people you imagine in your head? Are you saying that I believe that because I, I my grandfather was Jewish? Is that what you're trying to say? And the reason for that is just identity bias. It's just, this is what Which identity? identity? In the West. Which and identity? I don't know and I don't care. It's just I don't well, no no no. You can't say it's identity bias and then say I don't know. How is that anything to do with identity? Unless you're suggesting that my identity means that I have a particular view of this conflict. Yeah, your identity gives you a bias towards this conflict and that Which, makes you what what is the identity element that gives me a bias? I don't know what your identity is. I didn't even know. Oh, 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 really? Now this is is fascinating. This is How yes, Constantine getting Kissin there. is, I, he don't think he is, Jew, he's not Jewish or he doesn't follow the Jewish religion, but he is ethnically Jewish. Yes. yes he he came from a communist country, so they did not openly state that they were Jews where he came from, so they didn't really practice that where he came from. So, yeah, like, I mean, of course, you know, it's like you're a Jew, you you have a bias already on the subject matter. It's like, really? He's, I have no ties to Israel. I, I'm not from Israel. I don't have anybody who I know that lives in Israel, but... You have a bias on this perspective because you're Jewish. It's like, okay, yeah, wow. There's tons of Jews that do not like Israel. I mean, if you can't even get to that point in your head where it's like, yeah, there are Jews who don't like Israel. You know, it's like you can't have an honest conversation with these people because they don't really critically think about it. They, they are blinded by their hatred of Jews and by the hatred of Israel that they can't even have a regional, or, excuse me, rational or reasonable debate with anyone because they go, you are the enemy. I mean, you start the debate with you are the enemy. And look, and I know debates have to be conducted that way because the whole point of winning a debate is not to convince the person you're debating. It's to convince the audience. But if you have already start the debate with an unreasonable or untenable position and assuming, again, like, that's why I like Constantine so much. He's like, don't put words in my mouth. Don't paint me as the caricature of what you think I am. Engage with me as who I am. Yeah. And it, I watched that whole debate. I don't know if you did or did not. No, I have not. Yeah, it was literally him hashing up the same points. He goes, it's it's the debate of, it literally turned into that guy saying that Israel was responsible for most of the deaths, even on their people. And then Constant being like, okay, but if you kidnapped my wife, mm -hmm. I'm going to do everything I can to you to get my wife back. I don't care if I hurt some people along the way he goes whereas if you came to my house and i said something mean to you mm -hmm. or i you know hit you or something and you came to my house and then you just killed me and all my family who my family didn't do anything to you who's more wrong he goes both are wrong and that's all he said oh it's my literally gosh. it's literally the you know the sam harris kitchen knife situation where you know would you rather be stabbed by somebody in the kitchen who accidentally walks into you with their knife and they go, oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stab you. Or would you rather be stabbed by somebody who's in the trying kitchen to who's you. trying to kill you in the kitchen? He goes, 
And it, it was the same thing with Sink, Sink Uger or Chink Uger. It's like he said, I don't want to be stabbed. That wasn't the question. No, and that's the exact same debate we had whenever we were talking to our friends when we were on vacation. Like, yeah, we were like, the look, gun, it's the, the movie, th- it's the movie theater debate. It's like, because that, that was a real hot bucket, hot topic issue. We were like, going, you're in the movie theater. I'm in the movie theater. You're yeah, in the row the in Batman, front of me. The Batman yeah. movie premiere thing. Somebody comes in and starts shooting everyone. I stand up, pull out my concealed carry, and I start shooting to shoot at the guy who's who's shooting at people in the theater. You stand up and get in the way of my bullet, and I accidentally hit you. Accidentally. You, you survive, but I accidentally hit you. You get accidentally hit by my bullet trying to stop that guy. Would you rather intentionally be shot by that guy who's trying to kill you or accidentally shot by me? And they just go, I don't want to be shot. Like, it doesn't matter. We're, we're, this is the situation. This is the scenario you've been provided. This is what's going to happen you rather, in life. Would you rather be shot by somebody who's trying to save you or shot by somebody who's there trying to kill you? It's, it's the stupidest thing in the world, and all they do is, you know, they're not arguing in good faith that they go, I don't want to be shot, or I don't want to be stabbed, or I don't want to be killed. Is tough. That wasn't the question. Life doesn't give a crap about what you want. Life happens, and and, and I'll, I'll go into this. You know, isn't it amazing how? That's why I love the way Constantine debated there too. Isn't it amazing how quickly all of us would become the Punisher if someone hurt our family or our wives? It's like I don't care about anyone or anything else now. Guess what? Wrath is all that matters to me now. I will destroy the world in order to get back what I lost. Yeah, and there's a reason. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, it's, you know, most people in the military don't like it. But there's a reason why, you know, like all the, what was his name? Kyle, Chris Kyle and all the, yeah. the Navy SEALs put Punisher emblems on their stuff. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. It, do, it does. Look, it, again, we all would turn into the Punisher. Like, everyone likes to think, oh, I'm Batman. I would not hurt and kill people. It's like, no, man. Like, somebody, like, they be glad that I am not from Israel. Be glad that I am not ethnically Jewish. Because I can guarantee you, if, some, if that happened to me in my country, oh, like, I'd be like, drop bombs. We don't need, Gaza doesn't need to exist anymore if those were my family members and my people. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, yeah, they, they, they don't want us to exist, so why should they exist? That would be my logical thought process. Yeah. But no, I mean, they conduct war. Probably not the way that you might like how they conduct war, but they still conduct yeah. it and they try to minimize the casualties as best as they can. The the thought process of wars are need to be gentlemanly, that is not a thing in real war. Yeah, again, Grant, he literally dammed up every creek and water uh, hole mm-hmm. that went to Vicksburg. They were literally dehydrating the town into submission. Yep, they were starving the people and dehydrating. And you're like, oh well, they death. were right there on the Mississippi River, yeah, and they were bombing the other side of the river. So anybody who tried or bombing can't shooting cannons, so nobody could actually go to the river in yep. the daylight. And you and it'd be lucky to survive if you went at night too, because they'd just be sh- randomly shooting at night too. So you couldn't get water from the Mississippi, but they dammed up all the creeks on the other side going in. And like I said, they literally st- starved the town into submission. Starved them. And like I said, it wasn't the guys who surrendered it. They did it on behalf of the women and kids who were living in the town because they were watching women and children trace rats to eat. That's how warfare is conducted, even in the Civil War. So war is not pretty. Yeah. It's never it's never done the way you think it's going to be done. Yeah, like I said, only after Vietnam did we start, or really at Vietnam did we start, like, going in and, like, Helping the people that you just bombed. That wasn't really a thing. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah, you deal with your own problems. We're uh, we're pushing through. So, yeah. Anyway, that's about all I've got for you today. We just uh, went a lot longer than I thought we would, but we also got started a little later. But we had a lot of subjects and a lot of interesting things to be uh, talked about today. So that's about all I've got for you. This is the Twins with the Wasso Live. This was The Morning Loop. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you can help us grow the channel, help us get the word out so we can keep the, the local area, not just the local area, we would like to keep the entire world informed, yep. you know. But, uh, yeah, that's about all I've got for you today. We are signing off. God bless you. See you later, everybody.